Welcome to Electro Online. Here's our next problem from one of the JE advanced exams that tests us in physics, specifically mechanics, and even more specifically, waves. So here we have an interesting situation. We have a ceiling. From the ceiling, we have a rope that's attached to the ceiling, and the rope has mass, and so we have to consider the mass per unit length, and let's call that mu. And then at the bottom of the rope, we have an object with mass m. We create a pulse at the very top, the pulse will travel down to the bottom. We create a second pulse at the bottom, that pulse will, will move to the top. Those pulses are what we call transverse waves. And here are four statements, we have to determine which of those four statements are correct. Could be one, could be all four, maybe could be none, who knows? We're not told, we're supposed to figure out which are correct. And uh, notice that the wavelength of the two pulses generated for pulse 1 and pulse 2, they are indeed the same. So how do we solve this problem? Well, first of all, we need to realize that because the rope has mass, that the tension will increase as you go further, further down to the bottom of that rope. And so we need to realize the equation for the velocity, which is a function of tension and a function of the mass per unit length. We can see that the velocity of a wave on a string is going to be equal to the square root of the tension divided by the mass per unit length, mu. Now, mu is a constant according to the problem. Mu doesn't change. And the tension is going to be determined by the amount of weight hanging from the rope at any point along the rope. The tension will be greater at the top and will be smaller at the bottom. So that means that at the top, the wave will travel faster, and at the bottom, the wave will be traveling slower. So the velocity is indeed changing because the tension is changing. So we can write this as the square root of mg, that's the weight of the mass at the bottom, plus the fraction of the rope below the point where we're at times m times g. So we have the total mass of the, of the rope times g, but we're going to multiply the times the fraction, and that fraction depends upon where we are. When we're at the very top, the fraction is 1. When we're at the very bottom, f is 0, and any value in between, and we divide by the mass per unit length, which is a constant. That's all we really need to do. That's all we need, I believe, to answer these questions. Now, since the magnitude of the velocity, and here I want to warn you, there's actually one of those answers, it's a little bit tricky. It actually tricked me because I looked at it and go, well, I think that's correct, but then I realized what they were asking and it's actually wrong. So we have to be very careful to read the questions carefully and really understand what they're asking for. So first of all, is the time from O to A the same as the time from A to O? Well, the time will depend on the velocity. And we can see that the velocity will be the same for both pulses, no matter if we're on the way down or on the way up. At any point in, on the string, the velocity, the magnitude of the velocity will be the same on the way down as it is on the way up. Except, of course, there will be an opposite direction, but the magnitude will be the same. So the, the velocity of the pulse over here on the way up will be the same as the velocity of the pulse 1 on the way down. The magnitude will be the same anywhere along that strip and it's on the rope. So if the magnitude of the velocity is the same, that means the time must be the same in both directions. So A is indeed a correct statement. Now here is the tricky part. They ask us, are the velocities of 1 and 2 the same at the midpoint? For both pulses, of course. And my initial answer would be, of course they're the same, because at that point, the tension at that point is the same for both pulses, regardless if the pulse goes down or the pulse goes up. But of course, velocity is a vector quantity. And for pulse 1, the velocity is on the way down, that's negative velocity. And for pulse 2, it's a positive velocity. So since one is negative and the other one is positive, they're not the same. So the correct answer is no, B is not a correct statement, but I thought that was pretty tricky, because velocity, the magnitude of velocity, is indeed the same. But technically speaking, they are correct. B is not a good answer. How about lambda? Does lambda become longer when pulse 1 reaches A? In other words, does lambda change? Hmm, there we have to think about hmm, strings. Let's say we have strings that are tied like this, and we have them in such a way that we end up with a standing wave. Notice the different kind of standing waves that we can have is simply a function 
of where we plug the string to get the wave going. Once we create the pulse, that wavelength will not change. So it makes sense then that C is not a correct statement because wavelengths don't change. Wavelengths remain the same. The only thing that changes is the velocity, but the wavelength doesn't change. All right. So now, last question. V is independent of the frequency and the wavelength. All right. Is that true statement? Well, take a look at the equation right here. V is a function of the tension divided by the mass per unit length. So the mass per unit length, that's a constant. And the tension, big MG, is a constant. And here, M times G, that's a constant. The only thing that changes is F. F will change as the wave goes down. So that means that the velocity is only dependent upon position on the string, not the wavelength, not the frequency. So therefore, since they ask for, for us if it's independent, the answer is yes, it's independent. So there's only two correct answers, B and C, or in this case wrong, and that is how we solve the problem. So here we simply have to understand waves traveling on a string, on a rope. We have to understand the standing waves, the concept of that the wavelength doesn't change as it goes up and down the string. It would change if the mass per unit length changes, then the wavelength would change. But if the mass per unit length is constant, lambda will be constant, frequency will be constant, and only the velocity changes as it goes up and down. And it's the same everywhere along the, the rope, except in opposite direction. And that is how we think about it.